The travelers did not just stumble across Tevat. They were summoned here. That's right, someone from Tevat inserted their credit card and summoned on our banner, us, the traveler. And the sustainer of heavenly principles does not want us to leave. But why? And more specifically, it seems like they were summoned to Conria. I do have a video in the works talking about Sir Taluji, how he might actually be Conrian, his pets like the narwhal, his potential identity, and how he might be linked to the travelers. But who exactly summoned them? That is the real question. And you might be thinking, how do you know they were summoned? Look at the banner system and how you gain new characters. They're summoned as like a shooting star, a wish. And I think the travelers were wished here. You can see in the earliest cutscenes in Genshin, they're depicted as like a shooting star similarly. They come from the heavens, and they didn't show up here by accident. The only real history that we have of the traveler, Aether and Lumine, is that they arrived in Tevat for some unknown reason, and the player's chosen sibling does not wake up and remain asleep for an unspecific amount of time until our sibling wakes us up. We witness the destruction of Conria prior to the earliest cutscene, and then after this destruction when we try to leave, the sustainer of heavenly principles prevents that from happening. Why the unknown god blocked our way, we don't know. We fought them and we lost. One of the twins getting consumed by red cubes similar to what we've seen in Conria's destruction flashback, and the other was trapped in a seal, which caused them to lose their powers. 500 years later, the Traveler wakes up separated from their sibling and started one day. They accidentally fished out Paimon from the sea, saving her from drowning. While our sibling already traveled through Tevat and did their journey, throughout this 500 years that we were MIA. The big misconception or misunderstanding that I see a lot with people is that they think that the Conria incident happened before the travelers tried to leave. That actually happened first, which means that the biggest indicator clearly is that Conria is the one that wished or summoned the travelers here. We know that a lot of people from Conria like Rhinedaughter, potentially Sir Taluji, Piero, Dainsliff, they all have pretty unique abilities, it was a godless nation, and they had a lot of forbidden knowledge and knowledge outside of the world of Tevat. They would be the best candidates to breach the borders of Tevat and be able to sneak somebody like the Travelers into Tevat. But why do they have to sneak into Tevat to begin with? Well, it seems that Tevat is hiding from the rest of the universe, either trying to quarantine itself or it is being quarantined by everywhere else. It's, it's a strange situation we find ourselves in. And I think this border is slowly getting weakened and weakened, hinted at by the narwhal description as well. If there is life outside of Tevat, why wouldn't they have tried to make contact sooner? or more frequently. And I think the Hexen Circle Witches, especially Alice, is trying to reinforce this barrier to protect Tevat to an extent, hinted at by the Wings of Feasting description, and would explain why she's been absent. And the description of the Narwhal also indicate that Tevat is just another planet in the universe and that the universe as a whole has life in it. While it may not be massively abundant, we know it exists by the existence of the whale and other pets potentially. This suggests that the Travelers actually don't travel from universe to universe, but potentially just planet to planet. In Raiden's voice lines, the Raiden Shogun already kind of hints toward this as well, asking as if we know the truth about shooting stars at night because we used to be one of them, just like the opening cutscene. And creatures and beings being summoned to Tevat or invited isn't something new, we obviously know with the Narwhal, but also... Rhine Daughter, the Alchemist Gold, supposedly found Ilyanas floating in cosmic darkness and gave him a name and body, the dragon skull that we see in Fontaine. That was Ilya. Rhine Daughter found them and invited them to Tevat, or got them here one way or another. It is clear that the border can be breached when entering, especially by those who are invited in. And Sir Taluji was mentioned to be somebody like Rhine Daughter also having a whale that he invited in. I am going to be going over him in much more detail in his own video, but could he be linked to the Traveler and how they got here? And could he be native to Tebat all along, considering his name is of Norse mythology, which directly connects him to Conria, and being mentioned as somebody like Rhinedaughter connects him even further, also puts him in connection with the Hexen Circle, as Rhinedaughter is a member of that organization along with Alice and other renowned witches. But the interesting part now is why isn't anyone that's invited in or breaches the borders allowed to leave? 
The travelers were stopped instantly by the heavenly principles as soon as they decided they wanted to leave, stating the irrigation of mankind ends now. It's clear that we're not meant to leave, and that being summoned is something that Celestia opposes, but why not let us leave? Would it not be simpler to get rid of us and keep us out? Which further implicates that we're hiding from the universe, and if someone were to leave the knowledge of Tevat would become known. Why that's a bad thing we don't know but there's gotta be some kind of entity or being that Tevat really does not want to be found by. Maybe the primordial one or the heavenly principle's original creator themselves or where they come from. Either way you slice it, it's pretty apparent that Tevat wants to be separate from all of that. Or like I said, Tevat is in quarantine. Another possibility is that the human realm was created after the dragons were defeated and the light realm. Maybe all of this is to protect and preserve that. Maybe that is something that's just unique to Tevat and was created here. It's hard to pinpoint exactly why the travelers must stay, they cannot leave, and why the borders are so strict. Clearly there has to be a good reason why, otherwise it would just be beneficial to let these descenders and visitors leave. Get them out of here. Good riddance, but no. There's something that they need to hide or hide from or they're protecting. Another question I would love to know is who exactly summoned us? It is pretty apparent that Conria, in one way or another, summoned both travelers, and that it is also linked to a sovereign, as the description in the co-op name card suggests. This seems so suspicious considering the sovereigns, the dragons, and Conria have a lot in common, going against the heavenly principles, the usurpers. I wonder if at one time, or maybe to this day, there is a dragon posing as a Conrian or always has possibly even started that nation, whether it be Nibelung or another type of sovereign. Maybe Rhindaughter, Sir Taluji himself. And all of the monsters that Rhindaughter seems to cook up are in the form of a dragon, and in the Hexen Circle cutscene, there is a dragon easter egg tease when showing Rhindaughter in the Hexen Circle cutscene, and I thought that was a very interesting and specific detail. And the fact that the name card suggests that a sovereign and Conria pulled the travelers in and summoned them here, I think it could be assumed pretty easily why they were brought here. To help overthrow the heavenly principles. To help take back Tevat, something that was once theirs. Conria, the Sovereigns, and the Fatui are all linked. They all have Conrians in one way or another, and they all have a common goal. And they would need the Travelers to bring about Ragnarok. Well, what's Ragnarok? Ragnarok is the destruction of Asgard. I am going to go into greater detail on this in my Sertoluji video. That probably is going to be my next video, but don't you notice the parallels between North Mythology and Genshin, Conria, and how Conria is directly opposed to Celestia? Celestia represents Asgard, and Ragnarok represents the Fatui, Conria, and the Sovereigns, what they're ultimately trying to do, destroy the Heavenly Principles, destroy Celestia. Even Sertoluji's name comes from Surtur, who is the catalyst for Ragnarok. So what does that tell you? Like I said, I'm going to be breaking down every little detail about Sertoluji, Skirk, everything revolving around him, his relationship with Conria, every potential obstacle. But ultimately, the Traveler, where do we fit in? In our last region, the Cryo region, Shaznaya, the Everwinter Without Mercy, our conquest, once we have the Third Descender revived, the Gnosis revived, to combat the Heavenly Principles in Celestia, is that the Traveler's goal all along? Honestly, it's impossible to say, but the Traveler, a variable, an anomaly in the system, or in the world of Tebat. I don't think the Travelers were targeted specifically. It's hard to say if the Travelers in their entirety were specifically summoned, targeted, or if Conria summoned outside help from a Descender-like being and it just happened to be the Traveler, that I have no idea. It's hard to say. Unless they knew about the Traveler through Divination and the Old Hag. But seeing as that Conria is known to summon outside beings and gain help or the assistance of different monsters or entities outside of the borders of Tevat, it's really hard to pinpoint if they summon the Travelers. Specifically, I would guess not. I don't know how they would even know about the Travelers or their abilities or what they're capable of. I do, however, think who summoned the Travelers is the Hexen Circle. I think the Hexen Circle organization is the ones that ultimately summon the Traveler. Rhindaughter, Alice, all of the other witches, and Sir Taluji was mentioned to be related to all of that, so he is probably involved as well. All of the witches already seem to be well aware of the Traveler. We do not know about Rhindaughter where she is right now, but we know that's well in her capabilities. Alice is all-knowing. The old hag with divination 
being able to look upon the stars and astrology, it'd be able for her to track down us to summon, and who was able to drop in from time to time and give us a little foresight and cryptic messages. The Hexen Circle are on top of it. They would be the perfect organization to summon beings like the Traveler in order to assist with what needs to be done. And the Travelers are the perfect people to summon, so that is my theory. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as for those of you that might say, well, one of the siblings is not a descender, they're native to Tebat, because, you know, Ermin Sol's got records of them, yada yada. Well, obviously that's crap. How can they be siblings if one's from here and one's not? That makes no sense. It never did make sense. Ermin Sol can be manipulated, but besides that, because the one sibling had a journey before we woke up, after everything happened, the beginning of the game, it is safe to assume that Ermin Sol, at least from that point in time, started recording the Traveler or our Abyssal siblings' history into Ermensol because now that they've landed in Tevat and did their whole little journey before we even start ours, there would now be a history of them in Tevat. And because Ermensol records history and now our sibling has a history of 500 year long journey, whatever they ended up doing before we woke up, that's their journey. That history is implemented into Ermensol and now they have Ermensol data. That's the way I see it, and an explanation as to why Nahida says we're a descender and they're not. I think that was put in there in the Archon Quest and Sumero just to deliberately throw us off the trail and mislead us a little bit, which Hoyoverse and Genshin is very famous for doing. But to wrap the video up, in short, I do think the Travelers were summoned by Conria and the Hexen Circle organization to be a variable in this entire story, the mysteries of Tevat's border and why they want to exile themselves from the rest of the universe. We don't know. I think Alice is currently working on it in some relation to that. Otherwise, why would she be gone all this time? And Serta Luigi, I believe, is much bigger to Genshin's overarching story than we realize. And that'll be in a video very shortly. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Help grow the channel. I really do appreciate y'all watching this far, and as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.